Hi everyone, how's it going? Welcome to episode three in the Webflow series. Today, I'm going to go over how you can get hosting for free in certain Webflow sites. My name is Romy and welcome back to Make Something with Romy. In this series, we go over all the things you can make online without knowing how to design or code. So in the last video, I created a website, a homepage for this channel. And I used one of my favorite tools, Webflow. The only piece remaining was to get a domain and connect it to the domain. If you're tech savvy and are comfortable with all the terms I just mentioned, you can skip ahead for a minute. If you're not, here is what you need to know. When you create a website for yourself or your business, you need a domain. It's basically like giving your website a unique name. Uh, this is what people will type in the browser to find your website, like Google, Facebook, or whatever. The domain I wanted in my case is make something with Romy.com, obviously. Now, once you decide on the domain, the next step is to buy it. There are many services you can use uh, to buy the domain. GoDaddy, Namecheap, Hover, choose any. They all get the job done. Here we are. We have a website, we have a domain, and now we just need to host it. Romy, what does that mean? So your website's data and design needs to be physically stored somewhere. And for that, you need to buy or rent server space. Romy, how do I do that? Oh, with a hosting service. And sometimes it costs you as low as $10 a month. Now, when I looked at the prices for hosting in Webflow, it's $20 a month. Now, for me, that's a lot for hosting my single page website. So let me ask you, has this hosting cost ever prevented you from using Webflow for your projects? You know me. I started looking around and I found a hack and I'm so excited to share it with you today because this will completely help you bypass the Webflow hosting cost. Before we start, uh, a couple of asterisk terms and conditions. First, this hack will work for static websites only. By static, I mean something that doesn't automatically update. For example, like if your website is following numbers of your Instagram followers that are constantly changing, this won't work. If you have any kind of user interaction, like asking users to create their own profiles, that's not a static website either, so it won't work. Or even if your website uses a CMS, which is a content management system, which is essentially a, a database that is used to manage the assets of your website, blog posts, photos, videos, this won't work either. And guys, it will involve a teeny tiny bit of coding. It's very simple. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. Also, let's talk about the tools that will help me hack this. I'll be using this amazing free hosting service for static websites called Netlify. Now, Netlify doesn't directly work with Webflow. So I'm going to have to download my website's code from Webflow and then upload it into another uh, tool called GitHub, which works easily with Netlify. So to recap things, uh, this is where, you know, we were in the last episode. We had created this landing page in Webflow. And uh, now um, we are going to follow three simple steps um, so that we could get free hosting and bypass the Webflow hosting cost. First is to download the code from Webflow. Second is to upload your code on GitHub. And third is to host it using Netlify. That's it. Let's dive right into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually go and export the code. So we'll go here and clicking on this, it's taking a while. And I am going to prepare a zip folder and then download it. And that is that. Step one completed. And here I have all the code ready to go. Now we are on step two. First, if you don't have an account on GitHub, create one. I'm logged into my account. Now GitHub lets engineers manage different versions of their code. In engineering language, these are called version control systems. We're using it today just to upload our code, but wanted you to know what GitHub is really capable of, just in case you're curious, you know. 
once you're in GitHub, let's go over here and click New Repository. Definition alert. A repository is essentially another name for a folder. Honestly, technology just seems to have these complicated terms. So let's go and um, create one. So let's call this make something. Let's call it the home page. And I'm going to make a private one and then create the repository. All right. Now, once we've created a repository, here is where the coding comes in. We won't upload our folder of code like we usually do by dragging and dropping. We will write code to upload our code without physically moving files. You'll see, it's really cool. Oh, and here in this page, GitHub lets you know what lines of code you need to write. It's just six lines. Six lines is not a lot. Let's give it a shot. Did I just rhyme something? <laughs> okay, uh, so the next question is, where are we typing this code? If you're on a Mac, we'll type it on your terminal. Open the Finder and then open the terminal. Windows has a similar program too. Now, the first thing we need to do when terminal is open is go into the folder we downloaded the code in. The way we change and navigate folders here is through a command cd. So let's do this. Now, first we'll go into cd downloads and then into the actual folder from there. By the way, you don't need to remember the whole folder name. Just a quick tip is to hit tab and it'll auto-complete it for you. So let's go into the downloads folder, find the actual name. It's called make something lp.webflow. And start typing that, hit tab, and there you go. Now, let's follow the steps on the screen and write your first few lines of code. Um, git init. This just tells a computer to start using git for the project. Um, then we'll type git add period. The period is very important and it tells the computer that I want to add all the files in this project to the folder. Then git commit slash m adding the files. Uh, this adds all the files into a local folder, which will be later used to add it to your GitHub account. Then this line here called git remote add, uh, we'll just copy it. And this just makes the connection between your GitHub account and your computer folder. And finally, it's git push origin master. This will push the code to your folder into the GitHub account. That's it. Now, let's see if this worked. But let's go into make something and let's see what the folder looks like now. And there you see every single thing four minutes ago, I just talked for four minutes, I guess, uh, four minutes ago got added uh, into GitHub. Isn't that cool? So there it is, second step done. And I promise you, this was the only code related step. And now we are ready to host this code. Uh, and for that, we'll be using a service called Netlify. So here I am on netlify.com. And you know what the best thing about it is and why we did all this? Because static website hosting is free up to a certain point for custom domains. That's awesome. Okay, now this involves a couple of steps. First, we need to host the site to Netlify from your GitHub account. And second, we just connect our static domain. So let's log into Netlify. You can log in using your GitHub account, which you just created. And there you go. I'm gonna click on this new site from Git choose GitHub and connect it. Um, the repo I'm gonna search for is the one we just created called make something. And there you go. I don't need to fill anything else for now. Um, and all I need to do is deploy the site. Part one, done. All right, 
So uh, site is deployed, definition load. Uh, deployed just means it's up and running. Now, if you click on this link over here, we can actually check out our hosted site on Netlify. The URL still has, you know, a dot .netlify dot app, as you can see, but we're going to change it to make something with Romy.com very soon. And it's all looking good. So let's get into the last part, um, which is setting up a custom domain. So I'm going to click on this. And here it's going to ask me for my custom domain name, which is make something with Romy.com. And then I am going to hit verify. Yes, add the domain. The next thing it's prompting me to do is update my domain's name servers. Now, you can update your name servers on the website you used to buy your domain. In my case, I use Namecheap. So just log into that website and you will find something called manage your domain. Uh, like you can see, I'm on it now. And then uh, there will be a place for custom uh, DNS. And there I'm just going to be adding the name servers uh, and just saving them. Um, time jump and done. And I'll hit save. And done. That's it. Those were all the steps. Now, sometimes it can take up to 48 hours for, uh, you know, showing up on your actual domain. But let's see what makes something with Romy.com shows now. So let me type it in the browser very quickly. And there you go. It's already hosted. Isn't that cool? Oh, my God. That's so cool. And most importantly, it's for free. That was a wrap. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And please hit me up in the comments if you ended up trying this. Also, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'll be back with a new video soon. This is Romy, and I hope this week you make something, even if it involves a tiny bit of code.